activities of NGOs, not only in Nigeria but worldwide, contribute to national development. In the area of policy formulation, there are, there are laws that need to be reviewed in the state, and there are laws to be formulated in the state. It's a, it is the role of NGOs being coalition or network to come together and come up with issues that call for advocacy, that call for policy formulation, and later meet with the House of Assembly members, maybe through their constituency or during their plenary, and, and tell them the purpose of that bill. According to the United Nations, the term NGO was coined by the UN after the World War II to add more value to humanity, and since then, most of them have performed this role creditably well. The role of youth in nation building continues to generate robust discussions on the necessity for policy formulation, which is necessary for the development of any country. On the relationship between good governance and nation building, Nigerians believe a strong and viable nation can only be built if the youth are given the opportunity to serve and express their potentials. Ito Fabajo reports. The will of development of any country lies on how productive and creative its young population is. Nigerians say the youths in any society are the engine of growth and development, adding that any society that prepares its youths for its future will not only ensure a future development, but will also prepare our next set of leaders with the challenges of national coercion and development. 70% of the population of Nigeria are youths, are young people. Unfortunately, um, this 70% is not being maximized. Eventually, young people are relegated as thugs, uh, people, um, ballot snatchers, and all of that. They don't see them as people who would, uh, who would be able to contribute to national development. Okay, so um, it, it's time to actually change that. Youths are not useless, but they are useless. In Nigeria today, the old group in the school sphere are not giving the youth the opportunity to perform the way they want to perform. Our youthful population are not being incorporated into key positions where decision making can be changed. If you look into the private sector now, we see a lot of youths making exploits, a lot of young persons. 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, making great things for themselves in their private enterprises. But why is this not happening in our political sphere? It's a question of how much are we being incorporated? Um, let youth get their direction right. I also believe that youth are the leaders of tomorrow, but as it is presently, I do not see most of our youth taking leadership role in no distant time. Our youth have a lot of role to play. If we say we have, we need to have good governance, then our youth must rise up to that challenge. Our youth must be actively involved in our political system. They must make themselves available, both to vote and be voted for. As the most active population of any society, Youths are the major determiners of peace and stability of a nation. Therefore, they must be given the chance to thrive. Until you give me a chance to prove myself, you can't say what I can do. Neither can you say what I cannot do. You cannot conclude that this is what I'm going to do. Look at, for example, we have young people going out there, making Nigeria proud, outside the soil of our country. Go to UK today, go to Canada. They are young Nigerians making exploits in the health, in the tech, in finance, and the other areas of life. But look at what is happening in Nigeria. The youth population in Nigeria today are not being used enough and are not being given the opportunity. And until that is done, we cannot go anywhere. We cannot move from where we are today to a better height. And our youth need to refuse to be used as an instrument of violence. They should learn to say no to violence. They should align themselves in the path of those who make things happen and not those who cause trouble for the nation. If our youth will do all this and many more, this nation will be a better place for all of us.
Nigeria, with over 200 million people, out of which over 50% are youths, cannot afford to lock its youths out of development plans. If it must compete politically, technologically, and scientifically in order to align itself with the pace of development in Africa in particular and world in general. Ido Fabadu, OGTV News. Abortion has become the most controversial issue in global public health. It is estimated that a woman dies every eight minutes as a result of unsafe abortion. Despite abortion ban in Nigeria, unsafe abortion still persists. In this special report, Unyulua Ajayi takes a look at reasons why abortion still persists, the effects and way out. Our report is presented in this package. Abortion remains public health issue which has raised controversial opinions universally. Globally, an estimated 43.8 million induced abortions take place each year, of which approximately 5.6 million occur in Africa. The majority of these abortions in Africa are unsafe and almost 60% are procured by youths. This is due to the prevalence of unwanted pregnancies in this age group. So I feel maybe they are not well oriented or they don't understand the fact that unprotected sex can lead to pregnancy. Do you understand? And as a re and apart from the fact that this century we are in, every, everything is about sex, 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 sex. As a result of rape is another contentious issue which is generating controversial opinions. In cases in which um, a married woman is pregnant, the pregnancy is life-threatening. In such cases, the pregnancy is being aborted. But, you know, in cases um, of which young ladies that are unmarried, or maybe due to premarital sex, they, they are pregnant. Of course, it is outright no. You should not abort it. Because you that you, you, you went ahead and ventured into such, you must really be able to, you know, to... to you must be ready for what is coming. Respondents highlight the effect and measures to be put in place to reduce the rate of abortion. And by the time some of them go into search, some start coming out with um, heavy or persistent bleeding, you know, first many discharge, nausea, vomiting, different things that be damaged to their cervix, damage to their uterine lining, you know, things like that, infection, sepsis, certain, and even sometimes some of them even die. The best way it can be reduced is abstinence. We reduce it by orientating, reorientating the youth. If you want to have sex, then you have, then you use protection. Well, my religion does not preach having sex when you're not married, so it's not that I'm, I'm encouraging that. But I'm saying that if at all you want to have sex, then what do you do? You protect yourself. Abortion ban, unsafe abortion still perseveres in Nigeria. Respondents, however, urged the government to play its roles to control abortion activities by educating and creating awareness for pregnant women about the effects of abortion. The Nigerian Railway Corporation said it generated 3.09 billion naira from railway services in 2019. It said 1.5 billion naira from this amount was generated from the Abuja Kaduna Rail Service. The managing director, NRC Fidelis Okiria, disclosed this in a statement issued in Abuja and signed by the media assistant to the Minister of Transportation. Okiria said Abuja Kaduna Rail Line generated about 13 million naira monthly in 2019 as against the 80 million naira generated in the previous year. He said the rail line had been able to break even, adding that the money generated from the Abuja Kaduna Rail Service was used to service other stations in the north. He named one of the stations as the Maiduguri Rail Station, which currently is not functional due to insecurity in Borno State. He, however, noted that with the reduction of passengers from 80 to 40 per coach in a bid to stop COVID-19 spread, the projected revenue for 2020 would be affected. Peter Cleaver Okoro, Director, Legal Services, Niger Delta Development Commission, NDDC, in a letter dated July 28, addressed to Dr. Joy Miller, gave us seven days to refund 1.96 billion naira in compliance with the order of the Senate. It was noted in the letter that she approved payment of the money for Lassa fever kit against established due process principles and advised that the Director, Education, Health, Social Services, 
and director of planning, Okoro in the letter to Nule, entitled Demand for the Refund of 1.96 Billion Naira to the Niger Delta Development Commission, obtained by the media, said a memo in respect of payment for request for Lassa Fever case dated January 17, 2020, from the Director of Education, Health and Social Services to you as acting MD and CEO of the Commission at the material time. The said memo and the minutes by the Director planning specifically advised that the program should not be paid for as it was not captured in the Commission's budget. Nule, while speaking to journalists after the final session of the Senate at the committee last month, had stated that no payment was made by the NDDC on the award without the knowledge of the Minister of Niger Delta Affairs, Senator Goswil Akbabio. According to her, only 8 billion naira was expended by the agency from October 29, 2019 to May 31, 2020, when she held sway contrary to the figure being circulated around. The police in Kaduna at the weekend stopped a group of protesters near the refinery junction who claimed they were demonstrating peacefully against the wanton killings in southern Kaduna while confirming the arrest of a large number of the protesters. The police public relations officer in the state, ASP Ahmed Jalidi, said the arrest was made because there was no prior notification of the procession. The aggrieved natives, many of them wore black cloth, carried placards with various inscriptions depicting how angry they were about the situation in southern Kaduna. You are still watching OGTV News. We take a short break now, and when we return, the news continues. Don't go away. Welcome back. Kaskina State Government has appreciated the military and other security agencies for the gradual restoration of peace and normalcy to the state. It was also noted that the general security situation in Kaskina State was gradually returning to normalcy. This assertion was made in a statement issued by the Special Advisor on Security Matters to Kaskina State Governor Ibrahim Kaskina. It was stated in the statement that the current combined efforts by the military and other security agents were achieving the desired results and also giving hope to the people to return to their normal lives. Ibrahim Kaskina also urged members of the public to shun all forms of inducements to make them go into crime because it does not pay. He, however, appealed to the people of Kaskina to continue to volunteer information on criminals and the adults so as to collectively defeat criminality in the state. 87 Nigerians stranded in Sudan arrived the Inamdi Azitwe International Airport, Abuja, on Air Sudan on Saturday. Nigerians in the Diaspora Commission, Midcom, in their official Twitter handle, stated that the evacuees arrived in the morning of August 8. It said that all evacuees would proceed on a 14 on 14 days self-isolation as mandated by the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, the Federal Ministry of Health, Nigeria, and the Presidential Task Force, PTF, on COVID-19, it stated. The United States Embassy in Nigeria says it is concerned over the allegations of interference by security forces in political matters in Edo State and will continue to monitor them closely during the run-up to the governorship election, which holds next month. The U.S. Embassy said this in a statement titled U.S. Embassy Statement on 2020 Off-Cycle Elections in Edo and Odo States on Friday. The embassy expressed disappointment with the role played by some political actors in the state. The embassy urged all stakeholders, including the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, to work towards a peaceful and transparent process in Edo and Ondo states. 
Edo has been facing a political crisis in recent times due to crisis between Governor Gordon Obaseki and his predecessor, Adam Sashomale, who was his benefactor. The problem between the two, however, resulted in Obaseki failing to clinch the ticket of the All Progressive Congress, APC, and subsequently defected to the People's Democratic Party, PDP. Oshomale, who was the national chairman of APC, also lost his position due to the crisis in the state. Earlier in the week, the crisis also hit the House of Assembly, which led to its closure. A former lawmaker, Senator Buruji Kashamu, is dead. Kashamu, who represented Ogun East Senatorial District between 2015 and 2019, died at Fort Cardiology Consultant Lagos. The hospital is the same facility where a former governor of Oyo State, Senator Abiola Ajimobi, and the president's chief of staff, Abayari, died. It was linked that Kashamu, who had diabetes and high blood pressure, was admitted at the hospital for over a week before giving up the ghost. Kashamu, who was the governorship candidate of the People's Democratic Party in the 2019 general election, was facing extradition for alleged drug trafficking before his death. Meanwhile, the governor of Ogun State, Prince Dabo Abiodun, has expressed shock over the death of Senator Buruji Kashamu on Saturday. Senator Kashamu, who represented Ogun East at the Senate in the 8th National Assembly and contested the gubernatorial ticket of the state on the platform of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, against Governor Abiodun, died in a hospital in Lagos on Saturday. In a statement released in Abeokuta on Saturday by his chief press secretary, Kunle Shomori, Governor Abiodun described Kashamu's passing as one death to many and a devastating blow to the nation's political family. So rest in peace. Amen. Dozens of protesters in Beirut have entered the foreign ministry during a wider demonstration over Tuesday's huge explosion that left at least 158 dead. Several thousand of people are on the streets in planned protests, but there, are, there has been violence as police fired tear gas at stone chewing demonstrators. There are also reports of gunfire being heard from Central Material Square. Many Lebanese are furious at the failure to prevent the explosion of thousands of tons of ammonium nitrate. The blast at the port devastated parts of the city and has reignited deep-seated anger with the government. Two ministers who attempted to visit badly damaged neighborhoods in recent days were chased out. Meanwhile, the wife of Dutch ambassador to Lebanon, Jan Wagmans, has died of wounds sustained in Beirut's bomb explosion, the Netherlands foreign minister said. Wagmans Molia was hit by debris from the explosion shortly after returning to Lebanon from holiday with her husband of 38 years. Hedwig was standing in her living room next to her husband when she was hit by the explosion, the ministry said. The 55-year-old was the only Dutch citizen reported to have died from the explosion that rocked Beirut on Tuesday, killing at least 154 and devastating swaths of the capital. Five other Dutch citizens were slightly injured, the ministry said. Now sports news. Minister of Youth and Sports Development, Sunday Dari, says non-contact athletes will soon resume training in Port Harcourt Rivers ahead of Tokyo Olympics. The minister's special advisor on media, John Joshua Akonji, disclosed this on Saturday in Abuja. Joshua Akonji listed the non-contact sports to include lawn tennis, table tennis, cycling, golf, and cricket, among others. He said the proactive move was coming on the heels of the announcement by the federal government that non-contact sports 
could resume across the country with strict compliance to COVID-19 protocols. The Presidential Task Force on COVID-19, Adam Falte, announced the lifting of restrictions on outdoor communal contact, non-contact sports. Joshua Akonji said plans had been concluded for about 20 athletes, track and field, to resume training at the Port Harcourt High Performance Center. The Tokyo Olympics originally scheduled to hold from July 24 to August 9, 2020, was postponed to the summer of 2021 due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The minister's aide expressed optimism that Nigeria would do well at the Olympics and all other international competitions with the measures being put in place. On the use of public sporting facilities and stadia for athletes training, he said the facilities will soon be opened after all health protocols might have been put in place. We now serve you weather forecast for Sunday. Enjoy your day and just before we go on the news, there are no shortcuts to any place worth going. And don't forget that you can join us on these platforms, Apple, Roku, Windows, Blackberry, Facebook, and Android devices. You can also watch live on OGTV website, www.ogtv.com.ng slash live. And that was the news. Many thanks for watching. Do have a